Hello friends, this is Growl. In this video, I'm going to be covering everything you need to know for the other side on Mythic Difficulty. I'm going to break down the scary trash mobs, all of the boss encounters, and any other tough stuff along the way. The dungeon is located in the southeast of Ardenweald, a brisk jog from the Hibernal Hollow flight path. Each dungeon in Shadowlands has Covenant-specific effects. In this dungeon, if you're a member of the Night Fae Covenant, you can open haunted urns scattered throughout the dungeon. Once opened, they stun all enemies within 30 yards for 10 seconds. This even works on powerful lieutenant mobs and can enable some pretty dangerous pulls if you group them up by the urn. Right away at the start of the dungeon, you'll run into several important mobs. It may be a good idea to use Bloodlust and major cooldowns here because it will be a while before you run into a boss. Risen Cultist casts Dark Lotus, creating an arc of lotuses on the ground that quickly explode for heavy shadow damage. This ability can be dodged, however you might want to kick this if you have one spare because it can save your teammates some trouble. The large elites, Risen Warlords, summon images that cast Whirlwind in an area, dealing moderate physical damage to anyone inside. These mobs enrage every 30 seconds. This increases their damage by 100% and prevents them from dying for 12 seconds. Be sure to soothe this if you have a D and Rage available, as they can hit your tank really hard while it's active. The other side is made up of three independent wings, each ending in their own boss, similar to Theater of Pain. You can choose to go left or right at the start, it doesn't matter that much as you have to clear all of the trash around this area for the final boss fight as well as kill all the bosses anyway. Outside of Hakar's wing, you'll find Raptors and Death Speakers. The Raptors have a stacking disease, Decrepit Bite, that stacks and refreshes but doesn't do too much damage so you shouldn't worry about it unless it gets to extremely high stacks. The Death Speakers, on the other hand, are dangerous. Shadow Core is a cast that deals heavy shadow damage to the tank and should be kicked whenever possible. The Speakers will cast Death's Embrace on allies, increasing their haste by 100% for 9 seconds. This can be kicked if you have one spare, but isn't super important. If you have a mage that can spell steal, you actually may want to let it go off. These mobs also have a dangerous frontal, Erupting Darkness. After the 4 second cast, if you're standing in front of the Death Speaker, it will deal heavy shadow damage and knock you back. It can be tough to see since there are so many mobs, so watch out for it and be ready to move. Patrolling nearby is the Enraged Spirit, an incredibly scary mob that should almost always be fought solo. This mob has only two abilities. Enraged Mask summons giant masks everywhere with ground effects that deal large amounts of damage. This ability is a bit over the top and can make it almost impossible to see what's going on. The mask will also cast Rage every 15 seconds, pulsing damage to everyone nearby. This ability hits hard, so use defensive abilities and healing cooldowns immediately. The mob can actually be stunned by the urns, and there are two located in the inner ring of the dungeon, so use these if you feel like you need help. Heading down the west wing towards Hakar, you'll find High Priests. These mobs are surrounded by Devoted, which slowly channel the ability Devoted Sacrifice. If you let this get off, it will turn into new, more dangerous mobs called Sons of Akar. Continuously AoE stun these and nuke them down before they get the cast off. The High Priest will cast Heal, which should be kicked, as well as Smite and Shadow Word Pain, which aren't particularly dangerous. Hoodoo Hexers will cast Hex, polymorphing a party member for 6 seconds, so it's a high priority kick. Healing Wave also should be interrupted, and will heal allies that drop below 50% health. The Hexer will also cast Lightning Discharge, hitting a target for moderate nature damage and then chaining to anyone else nearby. Just make sure to get away from the targeted player, it shouldn't be too tough as it seems to favor range specs. The Deathwalkers have a light physical bleed that stacks up on the tank, as well as Bladestorm. This ability looks exactly how you'd expect it to look and if you stun it after the channel starts, the ability will end and not recast. Priest Shackle Undead is great for these as well since it's a spammable interrupt for all of the blade storms. When you kill them, the Deathwalkers summon a spirit which randomly melees players for quite a bit of damage. These seem to generally aggro on the healers, however the mobs can be dispelled to immediately get rid of them. There's an urn you can use on the right side of this hallway if you run into any problems. Just continue fighting through these mobs until you reach Hakar the Soul Flayer. Hakar is one of the most difficult dungeon bosses, so be sure to have big cooldowns ready for this fight. Throughout the fight, Corrupted Blood will infect two players, dealing pulsing shadow damage for 12 seconds. This effect attempts to spread, so be sure to spread out if you get this to not damage any allies. 
Piercing Barb is a tank hit that deals physical and shadow damage, so mitigation that is flat damage reduction will work better than just armor or magic absorb. Hakar spawns adds throughout the fight. These fixate on random players, so try to bring them near the boss to help your party cleave them down. They deal shadow damage, so killing them quickly is ideal, however when they die they leave pools that deal damage as well. They eventually regenerate themselves though, so you need to make sure that you're putting most of your damage into the boss. This can be hard because Hakar will cast Blood Barrier, dealing moderate shadow damage to everyone and creating an absorb shield around himself. This shield is based on how much damage the initial barrier hit for, so using defensive abilities and immunities right before it goes off will actually make the absorb shield weaker. When the blood barrier is active, Hakar will cast Blood Barrage, spawning red swirlies all over the room that must be dodged. Each time you are hit, you take moderate damage and get a stacking magic debuff that reduces your damage done by 10%. This ability can be interrupted, however the barrier makes Hakar immune to interrupts, so you have to wear it down before interrupting. Continue dodging this mechanic and dealing with the barriers to finish the boss. The southmost wing will almost always be the one you do second, regardless of which way you start. This is the Mechanome area, and the narrow corridors make this wing quite annoying. The first enemy you run into is the defunct Dental Drill. This mob is quite easy to deal with, simply tank it near a wall and hide behind line of sight when it casts Haywire, which deals massive nature damage over 5 seconds. In the case that your teammates are zoo animals that are busy drooling over the damage meters to go behind the wall, you may need to pop heavy healing cooldowns here. In the next room, you'll find a pack of headless clients alongside Arf Arf. The clients cast Discharge, a nature damage cast that targets a random player. Kick as many of these as possible to help reduce group damage. They will also cast Spinning Up, a 9 second whirlwind ability that deals physical damage to anyone nearby. Stand clear of this because there are usually several of them going off at the same time. Arf Arf has one notable ability, Woof. This targets a random player, and after 3 seconds will deal light damage and stun them and anyone else nearby. Just run out with this and be sure not to stand next to any of the spinny robots. Next you'll find another defunct drill as well as a lubricator. Lubricate is a cast that reduces your chance to hit with attacks or spells by 20% and when you jump with this you'll get stunned. Make sure you kick this whenever you see it. Self cleaning cycle is another high priority kick, healing the lubricator for 10% every second until you stop it. While you're dealing with this you must cross the experimental sludges, frogger style. Take your time because stepping on a sludge deals massive amount of damage to you and everyone around you. You can use displacement effects like Ring of Peace to temporarily stop the flow of sludge and easily cross. In the next room are Sentient Oil. These mobs have only one cast, Essential Oil. It will repeatedly cast it, dealing nature damage to a random target whenever it goes off. Disrupt as many as possible with stuns and interrupts because this pack can deal heavy group damage. Navigate past the sludge into the Brainstormium where you'll meet the Mana Storms. This is a council style fight with two bosses, Millhouse and Maleficent. First you'll fight Millhouse, who periodically will cast Frostbolt throughout the fight. You should interrupt this, however it doesn't deal much damage if it happens to go off. Power crystals will be summoned throughout the room, and you must stand between them and Millhouse. If not intercepted, Millhouse will gain damage as well as start pulsing arcane damage to everyone in the room. These crystals deal damage to you if you soak them, however they also give you the same damage increase buff that the boss gains. Ideally, high DPS players stand in them as long as possible, however they do stack up so you may need someone to swap out when stacks get too high. While the other boss, Maleficent, is still active, two players will be marked with laser. This creates a laser in a Z-shape between them. Stand on both sides of the boss to hit him with it. Just be sure to step out as soon as the cast finishes or you'll be stunned and take damage as well. Billhouse dies at 10% health, however you don't want to kill him just yet. This is because you want to use Milhouse's ability against the other boss later, just as you use the laser against him. After about 45 seconds of the phase, Milhouse will cast Diabolical Doom. This is a channel that will deal heavy damage to everyone in the party. Use the laser to stun the cast and bring the boss into the next phase, Maleficent. Maleficent throws buzzsaws at the tank, inflicting a heavy physical bleed. Experimental Squirrel Bomb summons a robot that doesn't look like a squirrel whatsoever that charges up and explodes to deal massive damage to all players. You can disarm the bomb by clicking on it, so have a healer or a mobile ranged DPS chase the squirrels around the room disarming them. 
If Milhouse is still active, he will cast Shadow Fury on a random player. Shadow Fury targets someone with a blue arrow in a large circle, and at the end of 8 seconds, everyone inside the circle takes heavy shadow damage and is stunned for 2 seconds, including the boss. Bring the circle into the boss, but be careful not to clip your team with it. After 45 seconds, Maleficent runs to the computer to channel Aerial Rocket Chicken Barrage. This ability deals heavy damage to all players during the channel. Just like Diabolical Doom, use the Shadow Fury to stun the boss and end the phase. If you killed Millhouse early, you won't be able to stun the boss, and instead will have to withstand 15 seconds of extreme pain. Don't say I didn't warn you. This wraps up the whole fight. Ideally, both bosses are low health, and you can finish them off quickly before either of the phases ends a second time. Jump down the escape tunnel on the side of the room as a shortcut to make it back to the central area. The eastmost wing leads to Dealer Zyaxa. The wing is guarded by quite a few mobs, however there's an urn here that you can use to stun all of them. This even stuns the big death speaker. We found that grouping up all of these mobs around the urn to stun them is an effective but somewhat risky strategy. The next room is one of the scariest in all of Shadowlands. It's a large room with no mobs in it and one thing you have to dodge. Wait patiently in the safe spot as the swirlies pass you by, or just hold auto run and press an immunity if dodging isn't your thing. Expect the average pug to take a couple tries with this, it might be a good time to go grab a drink. The last area is Night Fae themed and one of my favorites, wide open with tons of mobs to blast. Wield Shimmer Moths apply Shimmer Dust to players. This is a curse that stacks one every three seconds. It doesn't do anything until it reaches 10 stacks, but then it immediately puts you to sleep, incapacitating you for 10 full seconds. This is quite easy to handle though, because simply jumping removes all extra stacks of the debuff, so just remember to jump if it gets applied to you. Runestag Elderhorns don't have a cast, however they summon swirlies periodically around them that deal damage to anyone who doesn't move out. Spriggan Barkbinders have Bark Armor, a cast that absorbs 25 individual instances of damage. These mobs also have Pacifying Mists, placing ground effects that silence and pacify you if you stand inside. Most of these mobs are pretty easy to pull in large groups, however be careful of the Blade Beak Matriarch. This mob casts Angering Shriek, enraging itself and all other mobs nearby, increasing their physical damage done by 50% for 10 seconds. In this area is a mini boss as well, Mithresh. This mob has an enrage that must be soothed, which increases its physical damage, a heavy tank hit, and a fear that should be stepped out of. It isn't particularly dangerous, however its large health pool means it takes a lot of time. You can easily sidestep this mob just by walking around it. Just be careful however, as there are many invisible patrols in the area. Spriggan Barkbinders and Mindbenders can start in stealth and often patrol around the room. Although there are lots of large packs that are fun to nuke down in this area, there's really just way too many mobs. Generally, not only did we walk around Mithrash, but we also used Rogue Shroud to skip as many of the mobs as possible. Once you kill the last boss, you can take a teleporter back to the start, so you don't have to worry about getting back once you make it across the room. At the end of the path waits Dealer Zyaxa. This boss requires careful management of the spell Arcane Lightning. At the start of the fight, Zyaxa infuses a random player with lightning that inflicts damage over 9 seconds. At the end of those 9 seconds, the lightning then jumps and applies itself to the nearest player. Each time Arcane Lightning passes through you, you take 5% more damage if you get it again because of Arcane Vulnerability. This means you want to pass the lightning somewhat evenly throughout the group, ideally to members with defensive abilities available. Occasionally, Zyaxa will apply an explosive to a player. When the explosive wears off, it deals heavy damage to you and all nearby allies. To negate the damage, you have to use the displacement traps around the boss room. Once you hit a trap, you'll be sent high into the air, so nobody else is hit by the explosive. You still take some damage as well as fall damage from the trap, so you want whoever is marked with the explosive to be near full health before jumping in. Every 30 seconds or so, the boss will cast Explosive Contravance. At this time, your entire team needs to jump into the traps to avoid the blast. I found the most reliable time to jump in the trap was when the cast was right around two-thirds done casting. Throughout the fight, there is also displaced blast waves, creating beams of light that cross the battlefield dealing damage. Continue bouncing around the lightning while handling the explosives and bring the boss down. 
Once you finish the fight, you can click on the green distortion to get taken back to the beginning. Now that you've cleared all three bosses, Moizala will be active in the center of the room. I think this boss is some of the most complicated mechanics and will be a nightmare for pugs who don't know the fight yet. This boss has an incredible amount of health, however we'll get help later so for the most part just worry about surviving. Cosmic Artifice inflicts a low damage magic over time effect to all players. When it runs out it creates a circle on the ground that detonates after 9 seconds, dealing a pretty considerable amount of damage. Be careful where you're dropping these as to not take up room for dodging the next mechanic, Master of Death. This is a 3 part combo where the boss hits the left, right, and close to him in no particular order. The location he's hitting is telegraphed by his movement, so watch him when he's doing the combo to know where to dodge. Soul Crusher is a heavy tank hit, inflicting physical damage and then applying a dot that replicates the same amount of damage over the next 9 seconds. Be sure you have a defensive before the initial hit, as the amount of damage you take over that time frame will depend on how much that hit does. After one minute, the boss casts Shatter Reality, opening portals to different parts of the dungeon. You must take these portals quickly, as anyone left on the initial platform will be killed after 10 seconds is done. There are four different visages that spawn around the room. In order to defeat the boss, you must defeat all four of them. I'd imagine most pugs are going to want to take two down at a time, however we were able to split each DPS to one and then tank and healer to the fourth to get them all down in one go. The amount of damage you take is fairly light and it's mainly just a DPS check, however depending on your gear it may be a challenge to solo this mob. You have roughly 35 seconds to kill as many as possible and deactivate the primeval grasp by each one. After the timer is up, you will be ported back to the starting platform where Buon Samdi will blast the boss for 20% of the health for each totem you unshackled. You have a short time to DPS the boss before phase 1 starts again. If you took out all the totems in the first go, it's possible to finish it here, however most groups will probably have a second phase where you have to clean up any totems left. There are no new mechanics from this point on, just continue dodging until you can down all the totems, then blast the boss. The fight ends at about 10% health. Once the boss is dead, the dungeon is over. Collect your loot and go again. That wraps up my dungeon guide for the other side. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or tips that you think I missed, drop them down in the comments for people to see later on. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you gave it a like and subscribe to my channel. I'll be coming out with guides for each mythic dungeon and raid boss. Happy keying!